Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Southern Dirt. My name is Summer and today I'll be giving you a monthly tour of my Central Florida Zone 9 garden. All right guys, I thought I would try to catch a video early in the morning. I feel like that's when the garden looks the best, early in the morning and in the evening. So here's our queen's wreath. This is one of my favorite flowering trees that we have on our property. It's actually a vine and we planted two on each side of this homemade trellis that we built here and just kind of encouraged it to grow up. But they give off these beautiful purple flowers and I have been propagating these and growing more trees for our property. And if you guys want any cuttings of our fruit trees or our flowering trees, I do have them for sale where you can buy them as a package um, on my website or individually. Here are our two raised Vago garden beds. Recently, I put a video together of explaining why I love these raised beds. I'll put that link in the description. It's just like a two minute video and it really just goes over the highlights of why these beds are so wonderful and why I chose them. Um, we have spinach over here. We've got romaine. They, this romaine has been giving us a ton of food. It's actually so much that we can't even eat. Um, we also have some uh, curly kale, a dwarf variety, some regular dinosaur kale. I recently put a foxglove flower in here and um, I've got two small collard greens in the back. Over here we have a couple planters with basil. Um, they started to go to seed. I trimmed them back. Anytime basil starts to go to seeds or flowers, you definitely want to trim them back to encourage them to shoot more new growth and they will taste bitter if you don't do that. We've got plenty of mint here. We've got more basil plants. Here's our two plus year old shooting star eggplant. We actually uh, transplanted it um, earlier this season because it's just kind of random in the spot where we had wanted to put our Vago beds. Um, these have given us so much food. We love to fry them. They are in um, the flowering stages. I think I'm going to replant this in the ground. I put it in a pot because um, we weren't quite sure where we were going to put it. And if we got any freezes um, or frost advisories, I could easily take this guy inside. Um, we recently had some purple potted peas on this trellis here. And I wanted something more perennial that would continue to keep this ugly electrical box hidden. And um, I have a friend that asked if I'd ever grown Madagascar beans. This is a perennial bean that will continue to produce throughout the year. It will freeze back and look pretty rough in the winter, but it will come back. So I thought I'd give it a try and they're these really cool beans. So we're gonna see what those do here. I also put in some fox gloves there. At the bottom here, I recently found a small variety of tomatoes that kind of stays a small plant to try it out in our uh, green stock garden. And so far it has stayed small and it is producing a lot of tomatoes. Look at that. So let me see what this is. Siam looks like, tomato. So this has been really awesome. The height that says 10 to 12 inches. Um, I wish I would have purchased a few more and to, to really see how they would do with multiple plants in here. But um, I've been very happy with this tomato. I've grown different tomatoes in my green stock and what happens, they just get too big. Um, they do make plant supporters, which I did purchase for um, my green stocks, which I'll show you here in a bit. But um, so far, this one's working out great. I have basil. I have peppers right here. My peppers did so well in this green stock, I decided to purchase more and put 
a whole bunch of peppers in it. I also bought frost covers that have been very helpful. So anything that is gonna be damaged from the frost, I like to keep in my green stalks because they're just so easy to cover and protect. I've got all kinds of greens and flowers and succulents, more peppers and herbs. But I've been really happy with this. Over here, we have our other Vago garden bed. I've recently had some major ant problems as I'm sure everyone is struggling with right now. <clears throat> now, I did try boiling water on a lot of my ant beds just to see if it would actually work. It did not. So now we are trying cinnamon. Let me see. I put the cinnamon out yesterday. And yeah, they're still there. So I'm just been sprinkling it on top and like mixing it in. Apparently ants don't like cinnamon, though I've tried DE. DE does not work for me either. So I'm trying to find another natural option. So if there is something you guys have tried and it has really worked. Now I'm, I'm asking if you've actually tried it and it's worked. Because <laughs> a lot of people will read forums and say, oh, this is the way, this works. But when you actually try it, it may not work on certain types of ants in certain regions. Anyways, so far, I'm not sure how long this cinnamon is going to take to work or if it will even work. But I always love to um, show you guys what I'm doing and see, um, show you what's working and what's not. We have some onions in the front here. I have carrots. I have my celery that's doing really well. I recently plugged in some beans on the edge just because I had some space. I don't know if I'm going to keep them uh, there or not. I have some beautiful purple cabbage. We have some beautiful Siberian kale. And then my tomatoes are doing so good. These are the only two tomatoes that survived the recent frosts and freezes. Um, this variety is a money maker variety. I had one of my subscribers um, traded me for a different variety that I had. And I've been so happy with these because they do, I've already harvested a few tomatoes, look at that. They do ha just give you these nice sized tomatoes. This is about the size that they are. So you don't have to wait a whole lot of time to wait for them to get super big. You can use them on salads, sandwiches, however you may choose. But so far this plant is just beautiful and healthy. Um, this one's getting a little big and kind of coming over this way. So these are doing really well. Over here, I've got my little succulent stand. I need to be watering these guys a little more with the sun. And I have some herbs over here. Um, this is actually my original plant that I bought about eight years ago, um, along with some other herbs. This is the first start of my gardening journey and it survived. <laughs> It's ancient, it's like the oldest plant in the garden. But I just fell in love with this beautiful little garden that I had our local nursery put together um, of herbs in a little pot and started using it in my kitchen. And I was just so impressed of the things that I can make in my kitchen with fresh herbs and how much better they tasted. And um, so I really enjoyed that and then started my journey with gardening. So if you have not started gardening yet, an herb garden that's easy to tend to would be a very easy suggestion to start with and then move on to tomatoes and maybe kale and collards so over here are my two other green stock gardens and they are doing so good what i did is i did some mixed um, greens up top different lettuces and kale my bok choy has gone to seed um, I have peppers down here. They are the, um, these are my favorite varieties, the sweet banana peppers. Um, I did start sweet banana peppers from seed um, early in November or October, September, early or late summer, I would say. And they all froze back recently. So I've been very happy with this variety and decided I'd go ahead and just splurge because I did not want to miss my harvest for um, these peppers this year. 
So I just started using a fertilizer. I've been using it probably for about five months now. And I have already seen a beautiful increase in flowers and fruits and just the health factor of my plants. I will put the information to that fertilizer company in the description below. I actually make a small commission from that as well, but I've been really happy. And um, these plants are all doing very well. And here's some more tiny little peppers. Some lettuce, different lettuces. And this is kind of a random sweet potato. Um, we had planted sweet potatoes here last year and I must have not harvested them all because <laughs> a few of them are popping up. So we're just gonna let them do their thing. I have um, a couple of foxgloves that I planted on each side of this bed rail. My roses are doing good. Over here is our strawberry tower in the green stock. Um, I've always wanted a tower garden to grow strawberries on, which I did have one a while back, if you go to, back to my old videos. Um, the only problem with that is their watering system did not distribute the water evenly. You basically filled from the top and you just hoped that water made it to the bottom. With the green stock, you fill the top and it distributes into these small little reservoirs and waters every every tier perfectly. So this has been a wonderful, nice addition to growing strawberries in. So I did the splurge and bought new strawberries. Now the biggest thing is just keeping, <laughs> keeping the squirrels off of these guys. So now I'm going to go and show you some of the plants I started um, that will go into the spaces that I have open in the garden. Not really 100% sure where I will put all these. Um, these are actually suckers from the tomato plants that I have over here um, because we did lose all of our tomatoes over here in the garden to the freeze. And instead of buying new tomatoes, I decided to propagate them in water. If you guys have never done this, this is such a fun little thing to do with your kids. My kids actually have started doing this um, themselves. They'll just go and pick off <laughs> one of the suckers on my plants and stick them in water and watch the roots grow. So actually today I'm going to try to pot these and I'm going to put them over here in part shade and just let the roots kind of grow a little bit better. I may could plant them directly in the garden, but I'm worried that with the heat, it might not establish as well. So I'm gonna wait till they get a nice root ball and kind of keep them over here. And hopefully we'll have some nice healthy plants the next time I show you guys the garden. So over here, we've started Everglades tomatoes. I do sell Everglades tomato seeds. If you guys are interested along with a lot of other seeds, you can find them on the website. They're all homegrown and harvested here in my little backyard garden. I also started some more papayas because I did lose them in the freeze. And I have started to stage these over in our food forest um, in hopes that I can place them properly to where they won't freeze back. So you can watch um, my food forest videos to see um, our 125 fruit trees that we grow. And someone recently gave me a, a granberry hibiscus, but it's a different variety. So we're gonna see how that works. I had a friend give me some passion fruit. Um, she brought over some passion fruit and I was like, these are delicious. And they're not like the passion fruit that grow wild um, on some prop neighboring properties. So we're gonna try that out. I also started some loofahs, which I have these for sale. You can go back to my summer videos last season and see how many loofahs we harvested just from a couple plants. I also have, I'm going to give summer squash and zucchinis another try. I think with the fertilizer company I just partnered with, 
I think I can get these guys under control and stay healthy through the season to produce fruit and keep the bugs off of them. So stay tuned to that. I do want to put a little video together on how I'm using different fertilizers throughout the season um, to get a better harvest and just keep everything healthy. I also started some seminal pumpkins, which I also sell. Now, I typically don't plant these till May or start them in May till May, but I wanted to just start a few in spring just to see how they do. Um, last season I started a few in the spring and what happened is I just got a huge vine um, and not a whole lot of production. I was just, it was better off starting these in May and growing them through the summer. Um, I've got some succulents over here that I am propagating. This has been really fun to do. Um, I started with one little bunch of succulents and have made multiple succulents for the kids and I to enjoy. So that has been a fun journey. It's super easy to do. So over here is our other side of the garden. I do have some foxgloves that are looking so good. Now, I don't know if these are going to produce flowers this year. I've read that some produce the second year. Um, so I'm not sure. We'll just see, wait and see, but I can't wait for them to flower. We've got some hanging baskets of strawberries. I better get this guy before, oh no. We already have some bugs there. Um, usually we've got to harvest our strawberries at a point where <laughs> they're just starting to turn red. If not, our squirrels and birds will get them. On the last video, my tree here had no leaves on it. Finally, it's giving me some shade that I can work in my little area here. Over in this area, I pulled a bunch of weeds and threw this butterfly bee mix. My daughter also threw some into her garden as well. She's got her own little gardening space over here. I'll show you. She'll be really sad that she's not here to show you <laughs> and tell you everything about it. She's been asking me, mommy, can I do my own little garden tour? She's even called her little garden, little southern dirt, which is, oh, my heart is definitely <laughs> super big to know that she is encouraged and inspired by what we're doing in our backyard to want to grow her own food as well. Over here, I have my butternut squash. I'm gonna let it kind of just climb up this little fence here. We lost most all of our eggplants that we started from seed in the freeze. I did splurge and bought some established um, eggplants. I've got two different varieties. I've got a white one and an Ichiban type, kind of like a longer one. So we're going to try those out. And again, I have them in pots just in case we got a late freeze. Not really sure yet if I'm just going to get bigger pots and grow them in that. So then these will last for years to come because they are a perennial. Um, over here, we are starting to get some of some new sprouts of some dahlias. I'm really excited about those. I can't remember the color. I think they were a pink color, but we grew some yellow ones last year over here and I just kind of plugged those there because I knew I'd have water um, consistently on our drip there. Our blueberries have been doing really well. That freeze that came um, has really helped. I was kind of concerned because I was worried a lot of our leaves were falling off. A lot of our um, bushes were already in full bloom and thankfully look at those guys we've got I mean all of our plants are looking so healthy with tons of blueberries on them I think we have about 50 of them that are wrapping around our entire garden over here I have some Siberian kale um, recently this whole side of my garden has been attacked with an infestation of aphids. And what I um, did is I sent a picture to my local ag extension just to confirm, you know, what was on my plants. I know what aphids look like, but there's also some white little, yeah, see all those flies? 
that are coming off of there. There's like these little egg sacs. They're like white. And I don't know if they're, they're eggs from the um, aphids or there's some like white fly eggs. So I sent some pictures. They told me to bring them in because they are making my plants sick. See how I've got little blackness going through um, the stem there. So what I've done is I've kind of just taken the bottom pieces off, the worst part of them, and I'm just going to spray with neem oil and some BT. Um, I probably could come through here with like a soapy water and just like drown them out, but that's going to take forever. Um, so I have been doing a drop, uh, like a, you know, a, a what's called a um, cut and drop with my leaves. Um, I think I'm going to stop doing that for the ones that have bugs on them because usually I'm taking them to my chicken coop and the bugs are going straight to the chicken coop while the bugs are laying on the ground, which I feel like they're just multiplying. So I know I've told you guys to do the whole chop and drop thing, which I've done for the past year and a half and it's been great. But if you have an infestation or fungus or something on the plants currently, I wouldn't do that. So I feel like that is possibly um, giving me some more problems. So I'm going to take a leaf up to my ag extension and I will give you an update on what is going on. Um, they did say that it's if you leave the bugs on and not do anything to help them, that they can suck the nutrients out of your plants and eventually making them die. So you definitely want to get that under control. Over here are my collard greens. These are a Vates variety. This is like a Georgia Southern collard. collard. The Georgia Southern collards are what are a little more sicker than the Vates. There's more edges for the bugs to kind of stay and hide in, where these are a little bit more flat. They're easier to wash also when you do have bugs on them. These just aren't as bad off as the other ones. Um, are so another reason why I like this variety over the um, Georgia Southern. I've got some onion he onions here. Uh, my youngest daughter recently planted some zinnias here. I have some more problems with ants over here, and have put down some cinnamon. So we'll see how that works out. I recently, these are this is curly dwarf kale, um, which have been a really great addition to the garden. We just didn't plant enough. We constantly are harvesting these and making um, kale chips out of them and putting them in our salads. So I did buy the regular variety, which I'll show you in a second. Hopefully those will grow a little bit bigger. Um, over here is our row of celery, which is just starting to take off. Look at that. So these have taken forever to grow. I planted these back in September, but I know they'll be worth the wait. I eat, I juice celery um, several times a week and it's just, there's so many health benefits to celery. Um, I have some um, Ruby Eclipse sunflowers here. If you go back to my last season or you've been following me, um, the last sunflowers I had before the freeze they're really pretty. I saved the um, seeds for them and I'm giving, I'm testing them out to see if we are going to add that into the seed collection that you can purchase. Um, so stay tuned to those flowers because they are so pretty. I also planted some mammoth sunflowers over there that grow 10 to 12 feet tall. Over here I have dinosaur kale, which is doing really well. We planted extra just in case we needed to have extra to survive <laughs> and also share with our friends and neighbors. So randomly, I guess one of our collards got mixed up in here. But this guy's just huge. And I've got some flies, some weird looking flies in here. And I usually don't have problems with flies, so I have a feeling that it's possible there's those eggs are some kind of fly problem. And if you guys know what this is, let me know. They're kind of like, I think it's like white flies. I'm going to take this leaf to our ag extension and show them what's going on here. 
Oh, look, I got a worm too. I mean, <laughs> I'm getting attacked all different ways. That's why it's so important when it is hot. You've got temperatures 80s, 90 degrees in Central Florida to start your regimen of neem oil and BT. Um, there's all kinds of different options available, but if you're not doing that, it can definitely, which I have been falling behind, but it can definitely make your plants sick. I've got some more carrots over here. Our kids have been harvesting these. And let me see, maybe I should harvest one for you guys. Um, let's pull this one. This looks like a decent one. Oh no. <laughs> it's, I think it's a decent one. It just broke off the top part. My kids are gonna be so sad. I did this without them. Oh my goodness. Usually they're pretty easy to, look at that to pull out so we don't really thin our seeds out whenever we plant I need to get more diligent with that because our parents can certainly grow bigger but our kids have fun harvesting them at all stages throughout the year small and big and by Easter we're getting pretty decent um, size carrots I have some more collard greens over here I have the last of my kohlrabi here. We have some onions that are starting to get decent bulbs on them. And I've been using the tops. Here I did start some mustard greens. Not a big mustard green fa uh, fan, but I know a lot of you guys are. And I'm going to um, try them out this year. And they at least, I mean, they look like they're healthy and doing well. So we'll see if they make them into the, make it into the kitchen or not. Um, over here, I've got a mixed uh, variety of different sunflowers. I got the ones that um, the Ruby Eclipse I was telling you I was testing. I also have a couple mammoth sunflowers over here. We have a couple fox, fox gloves I've placed over here. And I also have th four different plantings of green beans and I planted them all at different times hoping to get different times of harvest so I'm not getting all my green beans at once so I started here then went over here then went behind and then went behind here so I don't even know if any of these guys have popped up yet not yet <laughs> so I'm gonna just give you a quick glimpse of my daughter's garden she has planted her own little beans she's got her own kale and little succulents here some different more succulents she's got some zinnias and then this is like a butterfly garden mix so we'll have to give you an update on those oh here's <laughs> here's her little tomato plants that she's propagating so over here, I'm gonna start with the best of what's happening over here, which is our, our peas. Look at how beautiful these guys are. So this is a mixture of um, different sugar snap and, oh gosh, I can't remember this variety. Um, sugar daddy, I think is one. But look at how, I've got so many on these. Usually before dinner, if my kids are starving, <laughs> I will send them to the garden to get a snack. So that way they fill their bellies with healthy vegetables. Um, and of course they love just getting outside and enjoying the fresh air in the garden and playing on their bikes. And they'll, they'll get a handful of fruit or vegetables and just sit on their playground and eat them. So it's a wonderful experience. So if you have children, um, I definitely recommend gardening with them or giving, their, giving them their own little space to garden. Even my little four-year-old absolutely loves gardening and she'll come out here and help me plant. So this is where I had my kohlrabi on both sides of the peas. I've since harvested all of that. And I think I'm gonna put my squash and zucchini on this side. Over here is our ancient collard green, which is turning into a tree the only surviving collard green from last year. 
um, which I did have in the shade of which was like part shade over here anything that was in full sun didn't did not last they're not really intended to last or be a perennial but um, I have seen people grow uh, collard and kale trees um, I've just never been success successful with keeping one alive long enough. So, so far, this guy is still producing. And um, I kept him in a shadier area to see if uh, we can keep him healthy. Now the chickens, I've been having a really hard time keeping the chickens out of the side of the garden. Because what happens is they are right over here they used to be good and stay pretty much in the barn area but they have found it all the way to my garden here which we don't have a little gate there um so what i've been doing is just letting the chickens out after i get the kids from school so then that way i know the kids and i are outside and oh look there's a butterfly that most likely they will not come up to the garden and if they do i've got plenty of kids to chase them out of the garden but as you can see, when they do get in, they just chomp all the leaves off and then our plants are left struggling. So I don't know if I'm going to pull these guys out or not. Um, I do have some beets that are growing. I know if you guys have been following me a while, you know that I do not have success growing beets. But I am proud of myself because I have two that are alive and growing our roots. So those are doing decent. We might get a couple beets from the garden this year. Over here I've got some onions. This is where we had our cabbage, little cabbage patch. And um, I'm gonna just fill in a video at the end of my daughter's harvesting um, cabbage for St. Patrick's Day. And I've got two left. They're kind of smaller um, varieties here. They're not smaller varieties, they're just smaller heads. Um, right here is where we had our tomatoes, which we are going to replace with our propagated um, moneymaker tomatoes here. And then also I'm going to throw a couple Everglades in here. So we're just going to keep them in the same area, even though we should probably rotate them out. Um, over here we've got some sunflowers. I have different types of sunflowers here. I really intended to grow more flowers this year. Um, we are going to be traveling this summer and we're not going to be able to tend to the garden as much as we'd like. So I think the plants that I have right there that I showed you that I started um, are probably going to be the last of the plants that I start unless it's flowers because we just will not be here for the harvest. Um, over here we have radishes which I have not been harvesting. A lot of them are going to seed. We're not really a big radish fan family. They are nice to put in salads, but we like to put, I would say we're more of a fruity salad type of family where we like the apple dressings and apples and blueberries and oranges and those kind of things in our salads. At least that's what our kids enjoy. Um, I can definitely come out here and harvest these and just dip them in ranch like I do my peppers and everything else. So I think that has included everything in my garden. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope I've inspired you to grow something new. I hope that you are enjoying all the content that I'm putting out through my channel. I want to thank you guys for subscribing or if you're a longtime subscriber, thank you so much for following me during my journey. Please make sure if you have any questions or comments to put them in the comment section. And I wanted to give a big thank you to any of you who have purchased seeds or any products through my website or purchased items through my affiliate links that helps me continue to do these videos for you guys. I will see you next time.